Showtime! They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, your village shop. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Outdoor Kitchen. This is my lovely wife, Nikki. Oh, thank you. How are you doing? Good. You're welcome. Oh, no, you're welcome. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> you're one of the two chipmunks on the cartoon. Yeah. Oh, after you, before you. Let's That's start sweet. doing that the whole show. All right. Tonight, you know how you get a craving? And we started talking about this. Then yeah. I threw the craving on you. There's certain times you just want something and you're not going to be happy until you get it. Now, we have preheated our oven. And again, what you do out here is the same as inside. We're preheating it to? 450. 450. What does that mean? That's 22 on the bottom and 11 on top, 33. How do you know that? For a 12 inch pan. Well, I'll tell you how I know that because there's an app. I don't have it on my phone. You can download it. I need to get it on my phone, but I looked it in the lodge book and I found that. Okay. Very simple, 450 degrees. Guess what? It's gonna be right around 450 degrees. We put some lard in there. All right, the thing that I've been craving that I threw the craving on you mm -hmm. is biscuits in the Dutch oven. Sally's biscuits though. Sally's biscuits. Now, here's the deal. These are very simple. Biscuits can be a pain, for those of you who haven't done them. Three ingredients, we're doing something a little different this time. We're using lard. Why are we using lard? Because it's animal fat. Is okay to use and sometimes better to use than the chemical type stuff. So anyhow, again, everything in moderation. If your doctor says no, no, but I'm telling you what. You go back and you remember the way the biscuits taste when your grandmother and great grandmother right. fixed them. There's a very specific taste that we're going for here today. Now, let's talk about what we've been up to lately. Obviously, we've been slowed down immensely. There's a lot yeah. of things we couldn't do on the show because you were healing up, and you are healing up nicely. Feeling good. Uh, that's the updated report. She's feeling good. She's nodding her head. Look he, at it. He didn't say not to nod your head. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> we've had some downtime, <laughs> but we've kept on doing shows because we kept on eating. Right. We eat almost every day. Yeah, we do. Three times, four or five. Mm -hmm. So the show went on. Dr. Nessie said that she could do these things, so we did them. So far, so good. Let's keep our fingers crossed. She's got one more test to go through, and I think we're going to be fine. So we started traveling a little bit, moving up and down the road. And you know what time it is? It's August. That means it's time for the 127 yard sale. We decided to go out and see if we could find some antique type stuff. This is pretty nice. Like a butcher's block? Yeah, I like it. Found this. It's hard telling how old this hunk of wood is. And I was also looking for some cast iron, some right. real old cast iron. At least 150 years old, maybe as much as 200 or more. Wow. That's the way everybody cooked. Yeah. We'll get a little history in just a few minutes from my new buddy Mike, but we also ran into all kinds of folks out there. Had a really good day on the we road. Did. Let's let our oven get uh, preheated and let's uh, let's head out to 127 yards though. I like that. You look very nice without your brace. Oh, do I? Thank you. It feels pretty good. You're welcome. Thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
So it's 127 yards in all time. Now, by the time this show airs, it will still be on. It goes until the 9th. So we're going to start in Lawrenceburg. Sometimes they start a little early, and then we're going to work our way down. Now, what am I looking for? Anything old, obviously. I would like to find some cast iron stuff. Um, I'm looking for some kind of surface out in our cowboy cooking area to cook on, to prepare things on. And always looking for kitchen stuff for the old kitchen and some food along the way because we're starving. Food would be good. Mike Hibbs, I was walking by here, now I do a lot of cooking in cast iron, but you've got some cast iron from way back. Tell us about, tell us about brand names and what you've got sitting right here, the two items I'm looking at. Well, the two you're looking at are unknown brand names, but they're American made. They're between 1750 and 1860. Wow. And you can identify them by the marks on the bottom. Normally, the initials on the bottom are from the caster that was on duty that night. They had a way to change and identify their work. And that's, that's normally what that is. So again, this is anywhere from what? 1750 to 1860. Wow. And then they came out with flat bottom stoves and the skillets without legs had this on it too. And they had to keep the women happy then because it scratched their cast iron stove. Uh -huh. So they had to make them smooth. And that was the reason for it. Very interesting. This cookware, they cooked on their hearth, they cooked outside. This was one of the main ways to cook which, back was, in the day. Yeah, that was the only way to cook. <laughs> and this one, you could put right in the coals. Mm -hmm. You could fill, coal, fill this up with coals and it would heat all the way around. Or you could cook biscuits on the top of it. Son of a gun. And they're called spiders. Three-legged spiders. spiders. Uh -huh. So is that not a name brand on no. that? It's just super No, old. it's just because of the legs. Now let me ask you this, what caused you to be interested in this sort of thing? I'm seeing cast iron and old stuff everywhere. Well, I, I worked at Ford and early on, 1970, I got into buying and selling cast iron. And I realized it was a whole lot more money than money in the bank. <laughs> so I started hoarding it. And when I retired in 98, I had 2,000 something pieces and I'm still selling. And wow. having a ball. All right, there's numbers on here. And tell me what that, that's number 13, what's that mean? Well, the 13 is normally the hardest piece to find. <clears throat> in a Griswold skillet, number 13, you can sell them for up to $1,500 for Gee. one skillet. Wagner sell up to 400. And this is a very old one, and I can't find out who it made it, but it's a number 13. Well, it's not that one, but the one beside it, we're gonna make biscuits on it that's tonight. Good. That's the number 12. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And like I say, you can make them right on top of it. They'll bake, or you can put coals on it and bake cakes in it. Sounds good to me. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> I, I, you, I met you over here at the 127 yard sale, and you said, hey man, why don't you try hamburger? I said, well, we just ate. And I thought, I couldn't possibly look at food, but look at that hamburger. And that's Chuck? Ground Chuck, 8119. And it's Lane's Diner. Lane's Diner. Kentucky Proud. Yes, sir. Look at that hamburger. Let's see what happened to being, going from not hungry to hungry. <laughs> oh my God, it takes two hands. Oh my, is this, now what, which that's burger do you call That's just my double cheeseburger. That's your double cheeseburger? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> let's see if I can do this. Oh, Mom. All right, explain to us where you are. <laughs> we're at uh, 1085 Eagle Lake Drive in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. We were just at the 127 yard sale. I saw you said you want a hamburger, catfish, Coney's, large burgers. I think you're right. Large Jim. burgers. Soup salad. Now, when you got your catfish going, thank you very much. Do I have stuff out of my hands? This is no, my wife. I was just going to make sure you didn't have. <laughs> Family run business? Yes, sir, absolutely. What's, what's everybody like? What's the favorite thing here besides these humongous hamburgers? Uh, burgers are a huge hit. Uh, catfish, obviously. Um, daily specials, uh, we have our meatloaf people on Tuesday, our salmon people on, on Wednesday, chicken and dumplings on Thursday. Just added hot browns. All right, you t there's a challenge here. That is correct. 
I've had 25 people try the challenge, and I've had 25 people not complete the challenge. What is that challenge? It is a five pound burger. Comes with a pound of fries, a half pound of coleslaw. Uh, you get 45 minutes to eat it. Um, what kind of bun do you put on that? Uh, it's a brioche bun. Um, it's very similar to the bun How that we much have on this burger. does this weigh? That weighs approximately a pound and a quarter, roughly, and that's just our double cheeseburger. Gee, so what happens if you if you eat the whole thing, the whole five pound deal, you won't have to pay for it? It's free of charge. T-shirt. Get a free T-shirt that says Lane's Diner. Um, Facebook page. And we're getting, of course, you'll be on the Wall of Fame there on our Facebook uh, at Lane's Diner. You know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about starving out for about a day. We're going to get some people down here. I'm going to say today, I'm going to exercise my stomach muscles. I'm going to try to eat that thing. I, I hope, I, and I hope you do, and I hope you beat it. <laughs> well, you know what? This is just on the spot, nothing planned. We don't plan anything on this show. We just live and survive and move around. Stop by here. That is probably one of the better burgers I've had. Look at that. In a long time. I wasn't even hungry. Run <laughs> down. <laughs> What's that, Dad? 1085 Eagle Lake Drive, Suite 11. 127 is right there. Right off 127. We're coming back. Sounds good. Looking forward Ooh, to it. Onion rings are good too. Say that for your house. You tell me, you tell me how it. Ha ha! You make me tell me what? Mm-hmm. Let's check out this warm spot, but you know what? I think I can eat that hamburger. I know you can eat it. I've seen you well, eat. <laughs> well, you know, you're not sure, but I really do think I can eat a five-pound hamburger. I would bet that you could. Let's pick a day. Let's pick some of our Facebook friends, some of our folks, family who watch Country Kitchen. Let's go down there and see if I can eat one. You know, you got to eat fries and coleslaw, too. Thanks, Kier. All right. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll fast for a day. You know what the secret is? Kelly what? said you soak, take your bun, we need water, soak everything in water. So you said soak the bread? Yeah, soak the bread. You can do it. The fry, Soak the fries, soak everything. Take some water. We'll pick a day. Yeah. I can do it. I can do it. Now, as our garden has matured and it's coming along, tomatoes are everywhere. Yeah. There's so many ways to use them. We made spaghetti a couple weeks ago. But there's something about fresh salsa. Now, we put it up, mm -hmm. we canned it, but how about fresh salsa ready for consumption? That sounds good to me. I mean, just cut right in, put it in a bowl, mixed up, and ready to eat. I like that. All right, I'll tell you what. Our good friend Carolyn's going to come and show us how she makes her homemade salsa. But we got a shout out to Ann Brown, her mother. Hi, Ann. Down in southeastern Kentucky. She watches the show. You know what? Let's visit with Carolyn and watch her make some outstanding, how would you describe that salsa she made? The best I've ever had, delicious. It, what is something, it just pops. At midnight I got it out and ate it again. That's that yes, good. you did. Yes, I did. And I helped you. Mmm, <laughs> fresh garden stuff. Yes, it is. This is Carolyn Sloan. Thanks for coming to our kitchen today. You live right down the road. I do. We've been friends for 2,600 years. Yes. And I want to ask you something. You're probably not going to know the answer to this. Guess what happened in this kitchen almost three years ago? Hmm. I don't know. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen was born. Really? Right here. We started thinking about it. We started uh, videoing some stuff inside three years ago, this time of year. Excellent. During, during the harvest season. So all the wonderful uh, veggies all started wonderful. the show. You know, and the thing is, you're a good cook. So today, as I'm looking, when I see black beans and corn going in the salsa, yes. I'm instantly fired up because I love corn and I love, I mean, that's a meal. Yeah. Tell us what you do. Well, this is a modified recipe from several that I had found and no one recipe did the trick for me. So I took parts of several recipes that I liked and added some stuff of my own and made my own corn salsa. We're not canning this. No, we this are not canning this. This is straight for consumption. Yes. From we put the it cutting in the bowl board. And we eat it immediately. That's what I'm talking about right so there. So that works out great well, for I'm us. I'm gonna shut my mouth and watch you do what you do. What, tell, me, tell me where you start. The first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take some um, kosher salt right. and half a teaspoon, and I'm gonna put that in our boiling water which is going to boil our corn at the last part of the process. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm gonna move my corn over here, get ready, and the first thing we're gonna do is take our poblano pepper. Now, did you grow that? I did not grow this one, but from now on, I'm going to. You like those? This is new for me, and these are delicious. I love them. So we're gonna take part of this pepper, and we're gonna seed it. We'll put that over here. Are the seeds hot on this? I don't know. I haven't tried the seeds yet, so I'm not sure if they're hot or not, but it said seed the peppers seed in the, pepper. the recipe, so that's what I did. And I'm just going to chop it up, and I'm going to take about half of it, not the whole pepper. I guess if you really like pepper, you could. And uh, several recipes call for different kinds of peppers. Mm -hmm. This one just happened to be something I wanted to try, and I've put it in several other things since I found it. Um, a lot of the stuff that we have tonight for the salsa has come from my garden. Mm -hmm. I have cilantro in my garden, but it's not ripe yet. It's not grown enough to use for this recipe. You know, that's the thing about any kind of basil, oregano, cilantro. It's not hard to keep and maintain. For, and it's pretty easy. You can do it on your back porch, yeah. really. Yeah, and easy. And then when that's fresh, when that's just popping right off, right out of the backyard or back porch, mm -hmm. you can't Oh, beat and it, it smells great. Oh, yeah. When you bring it in the house, it just smells like something you want to have in your food and mm -hmm. eat. I do not like the stems in my cilantro. So I try to use the top part with the mostly leaves because that's the most flavorful part for me. And that's obviously one of the essential ingredients yes. to sauce is, is good yeah. fresh cilantro. The recipe that I went by initially called for about two tablespoons of cilantro. I like more. You said so it. I add extra cilantro. The third thing we're putting in is a red onion. And this one did come from my garden. All right. And we're going to do a small red onion, a whole one, chopped up. So they don't have to be chopped up too fine. I've been such in, in the mindset here lately, everything that anybody talks about, I've been thinking canning. So when he's, when your husband Tim said, oh, she's making some salsa, I thought she's canning it. Mm -hmm. But when he said, no, 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 this is fresh for the table, I thought, oh, wow, we gotta get this on like that. Yeah. This uh, next thing we're putting in is tomatoes, and I like these small firm tomatoes for this recipe because they hold together a little bit better. Mm -hmm. They're not as um, juicy and wet as the uh, larger tomatoes, so they um, keep your salsa a little more compact. Now you look, you think about the vitamin C and all the vitamins in this right here. You're talking, mm -hmm. until you bring the chips in, we're pretty healthy over here. I like everything to be about bite size so that when you take a bite, everything's about the same size and all kind of goes together. All right, I think we have enough tomatoes. And then we're gonna add some jalapenos. The recipe said one small jalapeno, but I cheated and I am doing a jar of sliced, already sliced jalapenos. And I do about, I don't know, two tablespoons maybe. And you know what? I like that consistency right there with, with the jalapenos. Yeah. I use those all the time. So you this say is, you're cheating, but I cheat. I, well, I, do, I do that all the time. This is the only thing that's not fresh besides the beans. So we're going to put those in. And now we can add the beans. And um, I do about a cup, maybe a half a can of black beans because my husband likes them. Mm -hmm. So we chose to put black beans in ours. You do not have to do that. And then we're going to do a little bit. Um, I think it's two tablespoons, three tablespoons of olive oil, half a teaspoon of sugar, and then a half a teaspoon of salt. And while we're putting in, um, while I'm slicing the lime, I'm going to go ahead and put my corn in the pot to boil. It only needs to boil for about two to three minutes. You want it very crunchy, tender. And then while that's boiling, we're going to slice the lime. It ends up being about um, Two tablespoons, I think. So I'm going to put my tablespoon here. And then we'll mix it all up. And I like to mix it by hand because I like to get the right consistency. We need one more minute on our corn, and then we're going to slice it off the cob and add the corn to the bowl. What are you going to call this? Got to have a name. Sloan's corn Sloan's salsa. Sloan's salsa. Corn, Sloan's corn yeah. salsa. I like it. There you go. Did you did you see my? Shawnee Ware from the, from the 40s and 50s. I did. I Is like that it. Isn't that cool? Mm-hmm. Doesn't that display that, that well? Looks awesome. That looks awesome. pretty? I love it. Very attractive. 
cilantro comes out first. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I got a piece of that pepper, that's good. Yep, the pepper's good. Then everything else works its way in the sugars of the corn and the beans. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. All right. Perfect, so I could eat that over ice cream. <laughs> I don't like it that well. I'm gonna but... take a great big bite now. All right, great big bite. Mmm, mmm, that summertime sweetness right there. Thank you so much, that's delicious. You're very welcome, I'd it was fun. I'd give you two thumbs up if I could, hang on. All right. Thank you. Mmm. Okay, let's harken back to where we made our own butter. Mmm. The best butter in the world. The best butter in the world. Now, it takes, you know, shaking a jar or whatever. And, you know, after that, you can rinse that butter. A lot of people call it washing the butter. Right. And, or you can, you can even salt it and things like that. This is just pure butter. Or eat it with a spoon. Eat it with a spoon, <laughs> however you want to do it. good. But something that I really like, you get at some nice restaurants sometime. And this right here is, look at that. It's, it's oh. already cut. It's, I've been eating it. It's really it. hot outside. Can you tell I've been eating it? Honey butter. Delish. Now, this is really, really complicated to make. There's 172 different ingredients to make this just <laughs> right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Honey butter. What's in it? Honey and butter. You're kidding me. No. How much honey and how much butter? One part butter to your two parts honey. So I did half a cup of butter and a cup of your fresh honey. Just like that. Yes. Let's go ahead, go ahead and pour that in there. This is honey, though, our honey. This is our honey. Now we've got all this honey and we're looking for different ways to utilize it. So basically, you just get this going, mix it up really nice. You want your butter room temperature. We let that room sit Room temperature. Out. Look at that right there. Now look at the consistency you have right there. That's room temperature. That's just a spoon. You put it in the refrigerator and obviously it hardens up. Oh my gosh. That's it. Now, where are we going from here? What? Two things. Okay. Biscuits and honey butter. Sounds good to me. How many do I want? As many as my little tummy will hold. That's another really tough recipe because what, there's 178 ingredients in the biscuits? I think three. Three. And if I, I like. can make them, I can even make biscuits. Delicious. These are the perfect biscuit. Our oven should be sufficiently preheated. We have two, two cups, cups of flour. flour. Third cup of lard. Ooh, lard. Lard. What is lard? Rendered piggy fat. Mm -hmm. Say it real quiet. You know, don't want them. Don't want the pig here. What else? And this is three quarters cup of buttermilk. Sally says always use buttermilk. Buttermilk. Hmm. That's her Could secret. Could we go wrong? No. I don't think so. What do you want to do? Go ahead and pour in the flour. Pour in the flour. We're gonna do the, mix that with the lard. Now this should be just enough for us. For you, I hope you share. I'll give you a cup. All right. Ready for our right. buttermilk? Next. That's three quarters of a cup. Three ingredients. And again, a fantastic job you're doing there. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. No, thank you. No, thank Sally. I will. Okay. <laughs> I am looking so forward to this, I can't hardly stand it. I'm gonna take that bowl away. All right, I'm taking the bowl away. I'm gonna steal a little bit more of this flour. All right. You want me to cut them? Would you like to? I'm gonna set them aside. Just a candy jar. Sure. That's a perfect Top. cutter. There's one. All right, let's take this to the fire. All right. Oh my, look what we've got here. Those now you good. can make these as thick as you want. I want these a little thinner. I want these Yum. just this size. Why? Because I want more butter and honey than I do biscuit. Do you? Oh yeah. You just want a spoon this for is this? Just a, this is just a platform to lay up on the honey butter. Okay. Now, yeah. I've found a secret here. Now, these people aren't sponsors, but I just recently found these knives and I've torped about them. This is the cheese cutter. Watch what this does to a biscuit. Oh wow. That cuts awful nice. All right, that's, that's the cheese knife. Look wow. what it does to a biscuit. Oh my. All right, now that we've got steaming hot biscuits. <laughs> There's our butter. It's warm out. Look at that. As you can see, it's sweating profusely. Look, look how this is. Oh, oh no. It can't be. Are you going to share? Thank you so much. You're so welcome. You spread that so wonderfully. Can I have these? Mm hmm. 
Mm -hmm. mm. That's good. I could eat that with a spoon. I just want to eat this. I just want to eat this. Mm. 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 All right, I'll tell you what. Let's eat the rest of these, get cleaned up. It's a beautiful evening. Finally, the sweat is starting to dry. <laughs> it's getting that nice temperature at the end of the day. Let's go to the patio. Let's go see the dogs because okay. people have been asking about them. Bless their hearts. Poor little things. Yeah, we never see them. They never eat. Oh my, do you know how long it took us to set this shot up? People have been asking about Moses yes. and Maggie. Okay. I and they are here happened. for now. Uh, this is a good time to talk about our Facebook page. Like it and remember to check out and see where we're going and what we're doing. Also, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com for recipes and shows you might have missed. All kinds of stuff on there. These are the greatest dogs in the world. And uh, the uh, sheep have just run out of food, so they're going to come pick our pockets. We're going to get attacked. But you know what? Uh, this is also that time of the show where we say that it's all about good times, good friends, right. and good eat. <laughs> See you next week good on boy. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Ah. <laughs> to order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502 319 0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by the city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Diamond Gusset Jeans, the original gusset jean. Careful craftsmanship, continual improvement. Diamond Gusset Jeans, born and worn in the USA since 1987. Hi, Tom. Hey, how's the college visit? You remember it. It's good. Does it make the shortlist? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Knowing our clients personally is what we do. It's okay. This is what we've been planning for. And with over 13,000 financial advisors, we do it a lot. It's why Edward Jones is the big company that doesn't act that way.